Okay, so welcome to this video on uh, Gauss's lemma, which is an important lemma in algebra. Okay, so Gauss's lemma then today. Okay, so Gauss's lemma is about polynomials, and um, and uh, it's all about integer polynomials. So polynomials with coefficients in the integers. So if, for instance, we take a um, polynomial, 5x squared uh, plus 3x plus 7, that is a polynomial with coefficients completely in the integers. On the other hand, if I take a polynomial like 5 quarters x squared plus 2 ninths x plus 6, that is a polynomial in, um, in the rational numbers. It's not a polynomial with coefficients all in the integers. Some of these, polyno uh, some of these, um, some of these numbers are in the rational numbers. So we might say that this is an element of Q of X, uh, where this is, this is the ring of polynomials with coefficients in the rational. So if you take every possible polynomial of any degree with coefficients in the rational numbers, they're all in this great big set and it forms a ring algebra, and this is an element of uh, the integer, uh, the ring of polynomials with coefficients in the integers. Basically, Gauss's lemma is all about things called primitive polynomials, and the idea of a primitive polynomial is that, okay, we could sort of get a polynomial that is similar to this one, which has coefficients in the integers, and the most logical way to do that is sort of factor out uh, these denominators, kind of. So, we want to factor out 1 over 36. We want to, uh, in fact, I'll write it better. We want to factor out 1 quarter, and we want to factor out a ninth. And then when we do that, we'll get 5 times 9, because it's going to have to, it's going to, we're going to factor out the quarter from here, but when we factor out the ninth, so we're going to have to multiply this by 9. So we'll get 45x squared, plus this one we're going to have to multiply by 4, 8x, and this one we're going to have to multiply by both 9 and 4. So 9 times 6 is 54, 4 times 54 is 216, I believe. Okay, so there, what we've done is we have factored this into a rational number times a polynomial with coefficients in the integers. However, the problem is that this isn't very unique, is it? I could have done this in loads of different ways. For instance, I could now pull out, um, I could pull out 120 out of here. I could have it 1 times 120 over 1 over 36, and then I could have 120 times 45 x squared plus 120 times 8. I can probably do that one. 800 and um, 960 x plus whatever 120 times 216 is. So there we go. Um, it's not unique. This is another polynomial with coefficients in the integers that's sort of related to this one, i.e. it's just a rational number times, uh, it's just a, a, rational, a rational number times this makes this. Uh, so we want a unique way of doing it. And the way you could think about that is if we factored out everything we could. So if we made all of these coefficients uh, so that you couldn't pull any more out of them. So basically, if I look at this, uh, what can I pull out of all of them? Oh, please don't say I've managed to make a primitive polynomial. So let's look at the factors of 8. 2 is a factor. 4 is a factor. 4 is not a factor of that. Okay, so this one is actually a primitive polynomial. The reason being that I cannot pull any number out of all of these and still have a... Um, a polynomial in the with coefficients in the integers. Um, so, for instance, if I instead I had something like 46x squared plus 8x plus 216, that would not be a primitive polynomial because I can pull out, I can certainly pull out two, I might be able to pull out even more, no, I can't, uh, plus 4x plus 108. So this is now the primitive polynomial, primitive polynomial. So the definition of a primitive polynomial then, a primitive polynomial, primitive polynomial, uh, which is usually given the symbol f0 of x, it has a 0 at the bottom to show that it's primitive, f0 of x, is an element of uh, the ring of polynomials with coefficients in the integers. So it's a polynomial with coefficients in the integers such that um, the uh, highest common factor of all the coefficients. So we could say a n, a n minus 1, a all the way down to a 0 
is equal to 1. So the polynomial f0 of x is equal to a n x to the n plus a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus all the way down to a0. And the highest common factor of all the coefficients is equal to 1. So that's a primitive polynomial. And the motivation for where it comes from is trying to find a unique sort of integer polynomial uh, that is related to a rational polynomial. So for every rational polynomial, so for instance this one up here, I can devise a unique primitive polynomial, which is the polynomial which if you multiply it by some rational number will become that one. And this is the this is a polynomial that is primitive, i.e. it doesn't have any excess multiplications here. Um, so you've pulled out the bare minimum in a way, is the sort of motivation for what we've done. Okay, Gauss's great lemma then, is that if you have two... So this is Gauss's lemma. Gauss's lemma, and this is of incredible importance in algebraic number theory. Uh, Gauss's lemma is that if f0 of x and g0 of x are primitive polynomials, primitive polynomials, then, uh, then, oh dear, what's that happened there? Then, uh, the product of these two polynomials, f0 of x times g0 of x, is also a primitive polynomial. Polynomial. Okay, uh, so what is the proof of that then? Uh, well, the proof of it uses uh, concepts from ring theory. Um, so it uses the concept of a ring homomorphism. Okay, so um, uh, let's do b the proof is a proof by contradiction. Proof by contradiction. Contradiction. Suppose. So what is the um, what is the opposite of this theorem being true? Suppose f zero of x and g zero of x are primitive are primitive, uh, but f0 of x times g0 of x is not primitive, is not primitive. That implies, that implies that the highest common factor of all the coefficients, a n, a n minus 1, all the way down to a0, is not equal to 1. So instead, let's call this highest common factor h. So let this be h. Let the... Um, let the highest common factor, highest common factor of a n, a n minus 1, all the way down to a 0, uh, be equal to h. Uh, this has some prime factors. You can split this into a prime factorization. It might be a prime itself, but if not, split it into a prime factorization. So uh, split this, split h into its prime factorization. Factorization. Rization and pick one of these primes, so P1, uh, P2, all the way up to, let's say, PL. Uh, and it could obviously, these could have powers as well, up to N1, N2, NL. Um, split H into its prime factorization and pick one of these primes which divides it. Pick one of these primes which divides it. Which divides it. Call this prime P. Call this prime P. Okay, let me just turn over the page. Okay, so uh, call this prime P. So P divides H. Therefore, uh, since H divides all the coefficients, I is equal to 0, 1, 2, all the way up to N, uh, that implies that P divides AI, all of the coefficients of the polynomial. Now, Set up a ring homomorphism. Set up a ring homomorphism. Homomorphism. So, uh, a ring homomorphism, phi, which maps this ring of integers, this ring of polynomials over the integers, sorry, onto the ring of polynomials over z mod pz. Now, basically, what this is going to do is it's going to send any... Um, phi will map any uh, polynomial of this form, x to the n, plus a n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, plus all the way down to a 0, it will map this onto, um, let's say, uh, small phi, uh, non-capital phi, x to the n, 
plus small v a n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, all the way down to small v a0, where small v maps the integers onto z mod pz. Uh, and um, that's just carrying an integer to what? Oh dear, you can't really see very well because of the sun. That's better. Uh, z mod pz. Uh, so, uh, it carries uh, an integer down to what it is modulo p. And this is a ring homomorphism. And basically, this being a ring homomorphism, you can check, uh, check implies that this also is a ring homomorphism. Uh, so, all you need to check is that phi of two big polynomials added together is phi of each polynomial, and then add the... Um, add the uh, images of both of those polynomials together and the multiple as well and it just follows by the fact that this is a ring homomorphism this being a ring homomorphism implies that is a ring homomorphism so basically what I'm doing is I'm dropping all of these coefficients down to what they are modulo p and I've said that all the coefficients are divisible by p so what are they all modulo p they're all zero uh, because they're all multiples of p uh, so modulo p modulo p all coefficients are zero, are zero since p divides a i for all i is equal to one. Oh, zero, one, two, all the way up to n. Uh, therefore, phi of a i is equal to zero. Therefore, uh, big phi of my uh, polynomial, which I think I called. Um, I called f, which was f0 of x, g0 of x, uh, is going to be equal to, and I, I should write phi of this, is going to be equal to 0. But it's a ring homomorphism, so I can split this into phi of f0 x, phi of g0 x. And now another theorem from ring theory, this z mod pz, z mod pz is an integral domain. Integral domain. Uh, meaning that if a times b is equal to 0, it implies that either a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0. Now, z mod pz being an integral domain implies that uh, z mod pz, the ring, of the ring of polynomials over that uh, field, it is actually a field, but it's an integral domain, um, because all fields are integral domains, z mod pzx is also an integral domain, an integral domain. So, if phi of f0 of x times phi of g0 of x is equal to 0, that implies 1 of phi of f0 of x or phi of g0 of x is equal to 0. Uh, which is the statement that all the coefficients are divisible by p, which would have implied that one of them is not primitive. One of them is not primitive, and that's a contradiction, not primitive, uh, because we assumed that both of the polynomials initially were uh, primitive. Therefore, if both of your starting polynomials are primitive, then the product must be primitive, otherwise it would imply that one of the starting polynomials was not primitive, QED. So I'll just put that little box thing.